The following show is brought to you in part by support from Robbins, Kaplan, Miller, and Cerisi. We don't just practice law, we make history. Online at rkmc.com. As part of our series on Minnesota Leaders, I'm delighted to introduce you tonight to Ralph Rapson. Ralph is a preeminent architect, designer, uh, a wonderful artist, a wonderful teacher, professor emeritus from the University of Minnesota where he headed the School of Architecture and also the School of Landscape Architecture. Um, was at MIT before that and is the designer of many, many wonderful buildings around the world. So we'll talk more about those later, but welcome, Ralph. Thank you. It's wonderful nice to, be to here. have you here. I want to start in the beginning with your life and go back to Michigan. And the year 1914 was when you were born, right? Right. Tell us just a little bit about your parents and what kind of um, life you had as a little boy. I suppose I could best uh, respond to that by uh, saying that my family was a very normal, I think, uh, a typical family. I had uh, uh, two brothers and a sister. We grew up in a small town in Michigan, Alma, Michigan, which I uh, used to boast. I remember there were signs on the entrance to the city that it was uh, the geographic center of the state of Minnesota of Michigan. Hmm. Um, but it was a pleasant, very small 3,000 uh, population. And uh, so I went through the normal kinds of uh, uh, small town uh, life that uh, so many of us have enjoyed. Uh, my parents were, uh, well, my father was, I suppose you might say, he was a self-made electrical engineer. And uh, my mother was a housekeeper, and uh, actually, she did pass away. I think mm -hmm. when I was eight years old, so you I didn't just get to know little, her all that well. Boy. But, uh, and I read that you were really on your own a lot after I, her death, you I and was, your siblings. Yes, yes we. Mm -hmm. My father didn't remarry for several years, so I was. Um, I suppose my two older brothers and my older sister were my uh, main. Uh, and particularly my older sister looked after me, I suppose, for mm -hmm. a number of years. But uh, yes, I was pretty much on my own. And you fell in love with drawing from the beginning, didn't you? I mean, yes. in junior high and high school, you were taking everything you could, but there wasn't really an art class per se, was there? No. No, as far as I can recall, I always enjoyed drawing, and uh, I entered every conceivable little competition that uh, came to my attention and uh, and much of it was just for my own uh, amusement and uh, and edification mm -hmm. um, yes I uh, and I've continued that throughout my life and it's quite true that there were no there wasn't a real thread of uh, art that was running through the uh, the school education, I suppose typical of most schools. Occasionally you'd find someone, a teacher, that was interested and, uh, and exciting to work with, but by and large it was a um, pretty ordinary kind of uh, impetus. So I read that you took mechanical drawing for four years, didn't you, all yes. through high school, and, and did everything you could with, with yeah. that. Yes, I, um, I took the... Um, four-year mechanical drawing, but the last year I uh, uh, convinced the teacher that I should start my own kind of, uh, by this time I was interested in architecture. And I 
devise my own course, if you will, from reading in books and uh, and copying and uh, and duplicating certain things, but without any instruction particularly. But that's was really what got me going into architecture. So many people um, do not find their passion in terms of work until much later in life, and you really got a, a good start, didn't I you? I did, yes. By, by starting so I early. Did. Even after high school, I, uh, I didn't know how I was going to get to be an architect. I went to the local uh, uh, college uh, in the city and devised a two-year program for myself, um, based a good deal on graphics, although I did take other courses, of course, but uh, the theme, I think, in the back of my mind was somehow or other I was going to become an architect. And you certainly did that. And in spite of, um, can we tell the audience about the really physical limitation you've had all your life? Um, yes. You were born with a, a bum, right, right arm, hand, right? And it was um, it was deformed, so they did amputate it at an early age. So yes, I've been. I had to do everything essentially with one arm, and uh, whether I was naturally left-handed or not, I don't know. <laughs> you but, never uh, know, would you? But um, I, uh, and I, th I suppose I had a lot to do with my simply using drawing as a, as a graphics, a strong kind of communication tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so that actually by the time I did enter the architectural program at the University of Michigan, I was a very accomplished uh, draftsman. I could, uh, I think I was better than almost anybody else in the class. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now you had some wonderful mentors along the way. And when I've talked to other leaders, I've wanted to know about their relationship with their mentor, if they had one. Not everyone does. Um, who would you name as your primary inspiration mentor? That would be very difficult. I've had, um, and I'm not certain that mentor is the proper uh, uh, designation. I was fortunate to uh, work and, uh, and teach and to uh, uh, have as an instructor several very prominent architects uh, or artists or uh, one of these or two of these were um, Eliel Saarinen, the, the famous Finnish, uh, Finnish architect mm -hmm. and his son Eero. I was, you were close to both of them it sounds like. I was, like. yes. Mm -hmm. Although the father, and excuse me, I started to say Pappy, mm -hmm. uh, was head of the uh, uh, architectural program at Cranbrook Academy, where I was fortunate enough to receive a two-year fellowship. And, uh, and where is Cranbrook? Cranbrook is mm -hmm. outside of Detroit. It's about, it's I suppose, about 20 miles uh, north and uh, west of Detroit. Okay, and very prestigious, very it is. fortunate kind of placement for you, right? It is. Mm -hmm. It's a long story, but Saarinen was a very famous uh, architect in Finland mm -hmm. and he placed very high in a competition which brought him to this country and through a number of, um, of uh, actions he became director of Cranbrook and as you say Cranbrook is an absolutely magnificent place if you've never been there or if anyone has not been there it's well worth the, uh, the uh, trip. It's a great um, uh, unification or a combination of, of architecture, planning, landscape architecture. The gardens, the grounds are absolutely magnificent. There's um, sculpture very plentiful scattered around the campus. So that in itself became a, a, a mentor, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I did spend about four years with, uh, with the Serenans, and they became great friends and educators of myself and, uh, and mentors, if you wish to call it that. Um, and I worked closely with them on many projects. Uh, another person that comes to mind was, uh, after I left Cranbrook, I went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I taught for a period of time, about four years at, uh, 
at the new Bauhaus in Chicago. The uh, director and the leading influence there was a man by the name of Maholi Naj, mm -hmm. uh, or Nagi. Um, Maholi was a, had been a teacher at the Bauhaus in Germany with Walter Gropius and the, and the early Bauhaus, and later came to this country and established the new Bauhaus. And uh, Maholi was a painter, a sculptor, a, an artist, an educator, just mm -hmm. an all around Kind of a renaissance uh, man. Person, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, if I were to name perhaps the most unforgettable character that I've ever met, I think it would be Maholi mm -hmm. Nagy. Mm -hmm. he, was, uh, he was a dynamic and uh, uh, the ideas just bubbled out of him all of the mm -hmm. time. It was, now 90% of those were probably not worth much, <laughs> but the 1% were probably more than most of mm. us ever experienced in a lifetime. Was he charismatic then as He a carried on, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, it was very exciting working with him. Mm -hmm. Later in life, I've had, uh, I taught with uh, another famous Finnish architect, uh, Alvar Aalto, mm -hmm. and I worked very closely with um, um, Walter Gropius. While I was teaching at MIT, I made it my business to become very much a part of the program at Harvard as well. And this was 46 to 54, am I right? About in there, right after World yes. War II and... Mm -hmm. I, uh, let's say I left Cranbrook about 41, and from 41 to 46 I was in Chicago mm -hmm. with Mahole. Mm -hmm. And I was recruited to go to MIT and I taught there for the next seven or eight years. And while there, I got to know very well uh, a man by the name of Wilson Woodrow uh, Wilson. Oh, I'm forgetting his first name, but uh, he was head of the school there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, his name will come to me in a moment. I I know it so well. I can. But um, he was a very strong influence. As I say, all of these people, so I think, were... you can't just name one, can you? Pardon when me? You can't just name no, one I can't. No, when, I, you, when I listen to you. I, I, I mm -hmm. had many. Mm -hmm. uh, an architect in Chicago by the name of George Fred Keck, uh, I, who I worked with for four years. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, whether any number of... Uh, over my years, I've been very fortunate to have worked with some very strong very influential and powerful people. What do you think has, has made you a leader among these wonderful peers and then going on and working with all the students you have worked with? What are the qualities that you think, Ralph, have, have helped make you the success you are when you think of mm -hmm. leadership in your field? Well, for one thing, and I can put it quite simply, my ability to draw. That has been a, a trademark all my life, and uh, so just that alone, I have. Uh, you uh, could lean on that. You could I, count I lean on, on that. that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean drawing just for fun, or it's a design process. It's part of the uh, creative process. So that alone has uh, made me somewhat different, if you will, than many many other my fellows. Um, I suppose the. The other thing, and again, I don't, I think it's always been this ability, or not necessarily ability, but this desire to be out in front mm. architecturally. Mm. Uh, Where do you I think always that wanted to be on the from? cutting edge, if you will, of mm -hmm. uh, design and uh, looking for new ways of uh, solving and responding to physical problems of our environment. and. Uh, so I think that uh, many of my early projects were quite noteworthy for that, from that point of view, that they were new in their solution to uh, either difficult site planning problems or uh, the small house was one of my favorite uh, uh, areas of concentration. So I think this being more progressive and out in front and the desire, I wouldn't call it leadership so much, but the desire for 
perfection or uniqueness or originality. Mm -hmm. All of this, I think, has played a part in my, my career. You've been described as a modernist. That's probably an understatement. Mm -hmm. um, do you like that connection? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I've, <laughs> I've always been a very strong believer that, uh, that what we do, what we design and show on should be uh, a response to our period rather mm -hmm. than uh, emulating the past. Although I, I would hasten to say that understanding the past uh, knowing what, how things were done, how they were created, and why they were in a, in a certain fashion. We must never, that's the heritage on which we build. We don't ignore it, we don't copy it, but we profit from it. We, uh, we go from there on, so. And I think the, uh, you know, we live in unique and dynamic times, and, uh, and I think our uh, response to architectural, landscaping, environmental problems has to be a response to our the great potential of our times. Um, you designed, among other things, the Guthrie Theater, and that probably for most people listening um, is important to know if they didn't know that, because that is a, a great example yes. of your style. Yes. The use of windows, bringing in light. Um, are you feeling just very, very sad about the fact that the Guthrie may be torn down? I think that puts it mildly. Yeah, uh, it's like a child it's like dying, losing, isn't it? It's like losing a child or a very good friend. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel it very personally, of course, but uh, beyond that, I think it's uh, just an enormously uh, tragic loss to our community. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. There, I, I meet so many th people over the years that uh, have experienced the Guthrie mm -hmm. or plays there or whatever, and uh, and realize that it played a it has played a very significant role in the lives of thousands of people. So uh, to me, it's it's a, while it's a personal loss, it's much more so as a as a cultural um, community. Mm -hmm. uh, Loss. Treasure, and it's it's been yeah, a treasure. Yeah. It, um, uh, I meet people from all over, and they often say, "What in heaven's name is happening in Minneapolis?" We thought, mm -hmm. we thought that was a progressive and dynamic city, and strong and supporting the arts, and this is all true. But for some reasons, which I won't attempt to defend or condemn, mm -hmm. the Walker just does not wish to. Uh, have it continue as part of their uh, program. One of the questions I've asked all my guests um, so far is what has been the most difficult, most challenging part of your career? Um, and maybe facing the, the loss of the Guthrie would be right up there, but what, what comes well, I, to mind when I, when I ask that's, that? That's difficult. I, uh, I think I've, um, I've experienced my share of disappointments, of course, and uh, uh, one thing that is sort of interesting, I don't know, the night before graduation at uh, the University of Michigan, I was living in the um, fraternity house of the architectural uh, uh, associates, and um, the house burned down that night. Mm. And one of my good friends, um, three of us were working on a final project together. Mm -hmm. And in this fire uh, that night, uh, we'd all been out celebrating. And then perhaps he, we slept in the, in the attic of this old house. And I suppose he was uh, never uh, became conscious of it or whatever. At any rate, um, his loss and the fact that all of our drawings, all of my college drawings, all my material was burned. Oh. So one of your one of your friends died in the fire. Yes, along yes. with losing all your right work. Oh. That was quite a that was quite a challenge too. And I had quite an argument with the university about repeating the work, which I refused to do. 
And uh, so we had a, uh, several years of uh, where I was not awarded my degree. It wasn't until mm -hmm. later uh, uh, the university came to me and said, look, sign a piece of paper or something. Uh, wow. This is wow. ridiculous. <clears throat> but that was a, quite a challenge. And mm -hmm. uh, sure. the other, uh, this is maybe not a, isn't a good answer, but I think every new job is a, is a challenge. It's, uh, and you continue to take yeah, on you continue challenges, to, don't uh, you? So that becomes a, you know, a most critical kind of uh -huh. thing. I, um, well, the loss of my, my uh, good wife was uh, another yes. very great Mary. challenge because she was very much a part of my uh, and she just personal died. life and my professional life. And uh, Two years ago, Ralph? A couple of, two years ago, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. What would you say was the most exciting, fulfilling part of your career? What are you most proud of, um, whether it be a building, a, uh, a chair, a piece of jewelry, uh, your glass house in Emory? Um, it's all of those things. Is it? It's all of those things. I think, uh, um, I believe in, uh, to digress just a moment, I believe in a kind of a totality of architecture. It involves, uh, involves historical, it involves the land, the resources of land, it involves people solving <coughs> people's problems, it involves the technology of building all kinds of new materials, old materials. Uh, it involves the creation of space and, and not only that, the, uh, the meaning or significance or the symbolism of architecture. It involves the business, the hard-headed business of architecture. It's the zoning codes and uh, restrictions on mm -hmm. construction and so on. Mm -hmm. But above all of that is the need to consider all of this. It's a totality of, mm -hmm. uh, of all of these factors and it's a totality of the, de of the design. You ask what is the greatest, uh, partially my life has been one of being both a practitioner and a teacher. And on the normally on the thought that to design <laughs> something in the environment uh, means you have to have a pretty good understanding of many things. And I certainly feel that you're a better designer, you're a better practitioner. If you're a good teacher, you're probably a better teacher if you've practiced and understand people and the response to human needs. Uh, so it's uh, that satisfaction of, of, of living totally. And perhaps that's why you have risen to the top, this ability to, to encompass the whole. And I'm guessing I, not everybody does yeah. that. No, I think of that's, not. that's <laughs> quite true. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the reason for, for my success or what success I may have had, but uh, I do think that uh, that being on the creative edge of uh, of practice and being on the creative edge of uh, working with young people who are constantly are questioning and uh, challenging and uh, and demanding and uh, and trying to and I think just trying to to give them the dedication, the love, the the integrity, the uh, the these all are wrapped up in a kind of a totality of, of living and education and work. And your work is carried on by your students who've been so successful. I want to um, show the audience a few um, pages from your, your recent books That'd that are nice. just fantastic. Um, Ralph has a new book out called Ralph Rapson Sketches and Drawings from Around the World. and. Um, it has the most charming sketches that you have made. And I'm just going to open up to, um, oh, let's see, let's go to Italy. You have traveled and designed and appreciated architecture in 70 some countries, right? And here's just an example of some of the sketches he has done um, while in Italy. 
Um, well, we they, should uh, say you've designed how many embassies around the world? Oh, I don't know, six or seven. Yes, and th many of them have won awards. Yes. Um, this is just a fascinating, charming book. I love it. Thank you. Um, and I want to show your other book, too, which is just a gem. Um, this is really, well, you said it wasn't totally um, finished, but it's a Well, it only went biography. through about, it only went through about 1970 or thereabouts, 80, uh -huh. in the 80s. So we need an addendum. We need a second edition. <laughs> this is called Ralph Rapson, 60 Years of Modern Design. And that title was chosen carefully, I read, because you are so much more than an architect. And design, mm. I guess, descri a designer describes you. Um, let me open up and just um, give, give you a peek at this book, too. This shows. Um, wonderful actual um, architectural drawings. Yes. Um, this, I don't know if this is a Santa that's, Barbara. That's the University's California Santa Cruz. Oh, Santa Cruz, yes. Performing Arts, uh, Fine yes, Arts which Center. which is a wonderful building. I happen to have been there. Um, and also it's full of, well, let's just look at the back here. This gives some great, <laughs> great examples. Um, this is your home. It's our glass cube. Uh -huh. A chair that you designed, um, the beautiful church. I'm yes. getting the signal, Ralph. We're out of time. So with, with this wonderful photo, um, we're going to have to say goodbye. But we do have a phone number, and um, we're going to give that to you. That if you would like to find these books, uh, please call Afton Press at one eight hundred four three six eight four four three or you can go to the web, www.aftonpress.com. Well, thank, thank you. you so much well, thank for you. coming down. I'm sorry we don't have more time. Thank you. But it's been wonderful. I've enjoyed it. Good. Thank you very much. Good. I've been talking to Ralph Rapson, um, a fantastic treasure in our state. Uh, thank you for being with us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, have a good week.